I felt fulfilled and felt a calling, if you will, that that's where my path needed to go. Americans have been answering the call to action for generations, stepping up to defend our freedom, whatever the cost. Facing each other, that we would stand shoulder to shoulder and eventually return home with honor. Tonight, we honor them by allowing them to share their stories of valiant service in their own words. And those are the men that you remember. Okay. Yeah. And I wear it in their honor, not mine. WATE 6 on your side shares Veterans Voices, brought to you by these sponsors. Good evening, I'm Lori Tucker. I'm Bo Williams. And I'm Don Hudson. Thank you for joining us as we honor our nation's veterans. Veterans Day is marked with flags and parades to celebrate really the heroes in our community who serve or who have served in the armed forces. East Tennessee is full of those heroes. They're our friends, our neighbors, and our loved ones. And we honor them because of their bravery and for answering the call to action. Among the groups parading through Knoxville this morning, the Bill Robinson chapter of the Vietnam Veterans of America. The group is named in honor of Bill Robinson, the longest held enlisted prisoner of war who lives right here in East Tennessee. Robinson joined the Air Force right out of high school. In 1965, the Airman First Class was in North Vietnam on a rescue and recovery mission when his chopper was shot down. He spent seven and a half years in captivity, subjected to torture at the notorious Hanoi Hilton prison camp. Despite hardships, the POW held on to hope that he would make it home and shares that faith every time he's given the opportunity. And I had faith in ourselves that we had the tools to get the job done. Faith in each other that we would stand shoulder to shoulder and eventually return home with honor. Faith in our country that he wouldn't abandon us under difficult circumstances. But most of all, faith in our God that he would see us through. And he did. And he did, absolutely. In 1973, Bill and other American POWs were released. Knoxville honored his service with the dedication marker at the new Vietnam Veterans Memorial unveiled in the World Fair Park earlier this year. Now, another East Tennessee military legend, Herschel Woody Williams, represented an entire generation of veterans. He did. He was the last living Medal of Honor recipient from World War II, and as such, he was honored to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. Before his passing this summer, Don Dare, a veteran himself, spoke with a hero about the actions that earned him the nation's highest honor. The Medal of Honor is the United States' highest award for military valor in action. The Medal of Honor flag was raised a year ago in Knoxville as the oldest Medal of Honor recipient, Woody Williams, who passed away in July of this year, was recognized in preparation for the 2022 Medal of Honor Society celebration in Knoxville. February 19, 1945, the invasion of Iwo Jima began. 70,000 Marines swept into the small South Pacific Island. The 36-day battle was one of the bloodiest in the history of the U.S. Marine Corps. Fourteen months ago, we sat down with the late Woody Williams, who was presented the Medal of Honor for Valor at Iwo Jima. He was one of 27 Marines and sailors who received the Medal of Honor for heroism above and beyond the call of duty during the battle. A corporal and 21 years old, Woody was a flamethrower assigned to a demolition unit with a 3rd Marine Division battling an enemy that was well dug in. We were losing Marines so very rapidly because they were in a protected area and we're in open ground. He says the enemy was protected under miles of underground tunnels and pillboxes. Our training was and our purpose was to move forward. But each time they moved forward, more Marines were lost. So Corporal Williams' commander held a meeting. During his talk, I don't remember anything that he said particularly, except he got to me and he said, do you think you could do something with the flamethrower? He picked these four Marines to go with me, to protect me. And uh, I strapped on a 70-pound flamethrower and went to work. That was my job. Over a period of four hours, he did his job. Nothing special, he said. Why they missed me, why they didn't get me, I have no answer to that except the man up there wasn't ready for me, and the devil didn't know what to do with me, so he let me go. Well, but uh, I was able to eliminate the enemy within seven of those pillboxes by putting either explosives or flames in the pillboxes, and that gave us a hole we could go through. 
And you had four brave men with you. And two of them sacrificed their life protecting mine. And those are the men that you remember. Yeah. Yeah. And I wear it in their honor, not mine. That Medal of Honor. Yes, indeed. As a tribute to the Medal of Honor Society, Woody's legacy lives on today. Since 2010, the Herschel Woody Williams Foundation has been establishing permanent Gold Star family memorials across the country. We have one in Knoxville. The memorials are dedicated to those who have lost a loved one in military conflict. It's almost incomprehensible to me that so many cities in our country have been willing to form committees and raise money and establish these memorial monuments. And to the late Woody Williams, that gold star represented the two Marines who died protecting him so many years ago. Oh, Don, mm. what a story. This man, Woody Williams, was a legend, not only for those who served in the Marines, but among those who lost loved ones in battle. They're indebted to him as well. They sure are, Lori. You know, hundreds of Gold Star families over the years thank Mr. Williams for being the inspiration and that oh. driving force behind those Gold Star memorials that are now all around the country. I always admired him for not only what he did, but for his humility. Yeah, he was, he was quite a man. He was. All right, Don, thank you so much. And while not all veterans get recognized nationally, uh, volunteer honor guards here in East Tennessee make sure each and every veteran is given a proper military burial when they're laid to rest. They perform a military eulogy, rifle volley, they play taps, and present a flag to the veterans' family, all as a free service for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. It means everything. My father planned his own funeral because as he got on in age, he, uh, he knew that this day would come, as we all do, and uh, this was very important to him. He served on active duty from 28 May 1941, which predated Pearl Harbor. I just, you know, felt a, a calling and an opportunity, and, you know, it's quite an honor. <laughs> Chokes me up. In the past, this band to try of giving Operation Honor Guard to raise money, giving back to those very volunteers to keep their mission alive. If you would like to donate to the cause, you can still do that. We have information on our website, wate.com, and we thank you so much for helping back in October, raising more than $88,000. Just an amazing group, that is for sure. Well, as we take time to honor our country's heroes, we want to recognize those that continue to put their lives on the line each day. We're talking about our veterans who are now wearing the uniforms of our first responders. What is the drive to serve? I just, it's just in me to, to try to make that difference. I just have to. For four Knoxville first responders, the reason they do it is simple. The sense of accomplishment and, and pride, knowing that you, uh, you know, you did a good job and you uh, you left it all out there and you were able to help somebody in the process. We recently caught up with Knoxville Fire Captain Freddie Franklin and KFD Firefighter Jonathan Scott, as well as KPD Sergeant Nelson Hamilton and Captain John Kiley. All four currently serve the Knoxville community, but they also are all veterans. Nelson in the Marine Corps, Kiley in the U.S. Army and Air Force, Scott served in the Coast Guard, and Franklin. Navy and Air Force. It's awesome to, to be able to help people and to make a career out of that. It's just, it's wonderful. So where does the drive come from? Each have their own path. I wanted to do something bigger than myself, something I never thought I could do and push myself to my, my limits. I always had my eye on the military and I joined the Civil Air Patrol at age 13. And my grandmother's the reason why I'm the type to want to help people because she always raised me to, to help someone in need. It came from family life. My dad served in the Navy. For Franklin and KPD Captain Kylie, their time in the military isn't over. While the two continue to serve the Knoxville community, they both are serving with the 134th Air Refueling Wing out of McGee Tyson. <laughs> it's busy. It's busy. It's very busy. There's a bag packed at my house right now. If that phone rings and says, hey, you need to go X and do X, we're gone. Let's go do it. Let's take care of it. And that's the mindset all four of these first responders continue to bring to the table. Some days, you know, are harder than others, but at the end of the day, you made someone's bad day a little bit better. I've learned that we don't always get to do things as fun, 
that I learned from the military, but sometimes we have to do it to make things safer or better for other people. And for that reason, we say thank you to Sergeant Hamilton, Captain Kiley, Firefighter Scott, and Captain Franklin for their past and current service. You know, all four told me there are similarities when it comes to serving in the military as well as being a first responder. That's why we see a number of veterans make that transition to this field. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, amazing individuals. Still to come, we honor those who served. They say they served, and now they sing. <laughs> How a group of veterans use music to stay connected with their brothers in arms and the community. And breaking barriers, we meet the first female to lead the ROTC at Carson Newman University when we come back. Welcome back. They served, now they sing. Tonight in this Veteran Voices story, we meet a group of veterans who stay connected through their music. George Hancock loves to play music, and he loves gathering with fellow veterans for their weekly acoustic jam sessions. This truly is a band of brothers. In fact, every man here has served in the Navy or the Army or Marine Corps, and that, they say, is their unbreakable bond. It's something you can't explain, but it exists. It's there. Their voices and their fingers are not as strong as they were when they served, but Hancock says that doesn't matter. When you're here and you're playing music, it brings you, you start feeling better. And you feel better about yourself and you feel better about uh, the people around you. So music is good. And they're not the only ones feeling better. You see, their stage is the Bojangles restaurant at I-40 and Lovell Road in Knoxville. Every Wednesday, they gather here and put on a show for their loyal fans like Sandy Sanders. It's so good to see them again, and it's just fun, just a good time. And for their new fans, like Marcella Cedeno, who just happened to stop by. A great surprise be because we were starving, and it's like, okay, we are going to eat great food and also uh, listen great music. But the boys in the band and a couple of wives also play for each other. And Army veteran Joseph J.J. Johnson says this is a night when they don't have to talk about their time in the service. And instead, they can just sit down together and soothe their souls. The thing about it is, there's a bond between us that you can never break. It's something that come about when we committed to, to serving our country, and we know what each one of us has been through. The, the acoustic jam concert, by the way, free. You can just go into the restaurant. Maybe you might want to buy something to eat. Join in every Wednesday, 5 to 7, at the Bojangles again, just off of I-40 on Lovell Road. Oh, I'm so there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Don. Uh, the Army ROTC at Carson Newman University has a new person in charge. She's a graduate of the school and its Army program. Our own Don Dare, a Vietnam veteran, says Francis Young is a proven leader. Oh, well, my first one that I ever got uh, right here, Carson Newman. This is the Carson Newman Eagle Battalion coin. Lieutenant Colonel Francis Young, an Army nurse, has come a long way since first receiving this military challenge coin in 2003 as a first-year ROTC cadet. Army ROTC has been offered at Carson Newman since 1971. It's never had a female officer in charge until now. The typical day for our PT would be we get up around 0530. That's Francis as a junior in 2006 describing what it's like for those enrolled in the program. As the daughter of a retired Army Sergeant First Class, the Jefferson County High School graduate was the first in her family to go to college and as long as she can remember, she wanted to be an Army nurse felt a calling, if you will, that that's where my path needed to go. And as I started to pursue what it meant to be an Army nurse, it's different than just being a nurse. Um, I'm proud to say I'm an Army nurse and take care of America's sons and daughters. As Carson Newman's professor of military science, Lieutenant Colonel Young and her staff are responsible for the cadets under her command. Our officers that are commissioned through ROTC are going to be placed 
As new second lieutenants in charge of 30, perhaps 40 people, where they're responsible for those soldiers. I believe I'm a transformational servant leader. Um, I try to challenge them and, and harness the strengths that are unique to them. I believe that each person is created with a unique set of talents and gifts. Her two children, husband and mom, pinned the rank of lieutenant colonel onto her uniform at her promotion ceremony in September. Her father in his uniform presented the first salute to the new lieutenant colonel. And her husband, Major James Young, they met at Carson Newman as cadets, also presented a sharp salute. I believe that things happened for a reason, and I was truly blessed and fortunate to be able to get to come back. She returned to Carson Newman and won the appointment due to her leadership abilities. Airborne and air assault trained, she also wears the expert field medical badge. I love the Army. I love what we stand for. I love the military in general, and I love the ability to be able to work with such a diverse group of expert professionals. Here at Carson Newman, faith is a big part of this university. Faith has been translated into your Army career? Yes, sir. Being in the Army is a servant leader anyway, um, and so Carson Newman's mission here is to create worldwide servant leaders. I feel like I've been able to really blend my faith with my practice as a leader. As a leader, she has a collage of pictures filled with memories of her career. This is a photo of me uh, after, during the height of COVID. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Young's future is bright. Mm. Oh, Dom, what an mm. impressive woman. And I counted, she said servant leader yeah. four times. Yeah, she is That's, that indeed. She yes. has been for a long time. You know, she not only has her master's degree, she's halfway through earning her PhD. And following in her footsteps are some ROTC cadets at Carson Newman who plan on becoming Army nurses watching her exactly don thank you so much what a story good stuff there guys hey still to come as we honor those who serve we're hearing from an east tennessee man who served in world war ii fighting in the battle of the bulge he reflects on his deployment when we come back it's time to talk about winter weather i know it's not everyone's favorite topic but love it or hate it it's coming from snow and ice to mild weather, be prepared for what's next. Get ready with the Six on Your Side Storm Team. Stories about how winter could impact all of us start Monday at 4. Welcome back. One East Tennessee World War II veteran often reflects on his time overseas. Paul Phelps has quite the story. He was only 18 when he answered the call to duty, drafted back in 1943. Deployment took him overseas from England to France and on to Holland, fighting in the Battle of the Bulls. The World War II veteran tells us he looked death in the face, but lived to tell the tale, ultimately awarded four battle stars for his time in the service. We've seen as much combat, I guess, as almost anybody did what I did. The good Lord seemed to leave me here, and I thank him every day for it, and I, I want that to go on record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Phelps married his high school sweetheart right before he was shipped off to basic training. The two were married for 54 years before she passed away. They have two daughters, five grandchildren, and eight great-grandchildren. East Tennessee is home to the American Eagle Foundation, which cares for so many of the symbols of our nation's freedom. So it's only fitting on this Veterans Day that we check in on the most famous bald eagle of them all, Challenger. Now 33 years old, which is close, we understand, to 75 human years. Challenger has been seen over the years free flying at stadiums and at events honoring veterans. But now he is getting some well-deserved rest as a veteran of many of these events. He still does get to go out and do educational programming, but not quite like he used to. Um, he instead gets to just hang out here and just enjoy being retired. <laughs> Coming up on Positively at 6 o'clock tonight, we're going to meet Challenger's successor. He's almost nine months old now. There he is. The story of his rescue is quite something. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We want to take a moment to recognize our own veterans from WAT6 on your side. Investigative reporter Don Dare, United States Army. Chief Engineer Brian Crow from the United States Navy. Director Eric Grill Durrell from the United States Army. Maintenance Technician Chris Chopin, U.S. Navy Reserve. IT Engineer Steve Heinzman, United States Army. And with production Paul Durrell, 
the United States Army. Thank you again to all who serve or who have served, and we salute you on this Veterans Day. On this Veterans Day, we are thinking of our patriotic pride and our national symbol, the bald eagle. You could say East Tennessee's own beloved challenger, who has traveled all over, is now himself a veteran. Challenger is retiring after years of service to his country. His successor is, you might say, waiting in the wings in Positively Tennessee. Challenger is at home at the American Eagle Foundation in Sevier County, enjoying time outdoors on the arm of the foundation's training coordinator, Jenna Penland. Challenger, known for his enthralling free flying at events through the years, is slowing down a bit at the age of 33. He's doing great. He has settled in nicely to his retirement. Um, he loves just hanging out in the weathering yard in the sunshine. We do still exercise him a little bit. Uh, he doesn't do quite as much as he used to. Um, and we do still take him off site and um, out of the state to do different events. So we actually have an event coming up this weekend and we have a couple in December that we're going to do. <laughs> Just a few steps away is Atlas. At close to nine months old, he's being groomed to one day succeed Challenger as an ambassador, a role that has changed through the years. Unlike Challenger, he will not be flying in stadiums. That's not something that we see in his future. We do want to train him to free fly um, and have him free fly at conservation type events. So we might take him to fishing tournaments, for example, and use him to help teach fishermen about the importance of recycling monofilament. Atlas, whose name might change before he makes his official debut, came to the foundation after nearly drowning. The tree that his nest was in fell into a lake. Um, unfortunately, he did ingest some water, so he uh, experienced what we call aspiration. He got some, some water in his lungs, so it required him to have some time spent with a rehabber and some time spent um, at a vet's office when he was still pretty young. Fortunately, there was somebody nearby that saw the nest, that saw the tree come down and knew there was a nest in it, so they were able to get in the water and get him out to keep him from drowning. Um, so that's very fortunate. Both birds of prey are part of a larger effort by the American Eagle Foundation, moving soon to its new Project Eagle headquarters. It is celebrating 10 years and a million dollars given to bald eagle research to continue to keep bald eagles like Chad and now Atlas off the endangered species list. Now, what did wow. you notice about Atlas? His head yeah, isn't his he white. Right, yeah, the first thing I picked up is like it's brown. Yeah, yeah, he looks a lot different. He's young, obviously, mm -hmm. and I understand that white, uh, beautiful, majestic head uh, develops at the age of three years. Okay, so he, it that? will turn white here at yes. some point. Well, Challenger, thank you for your all of your service. Absolutely, Challenger. We love Challenger, and we love Atlas mm -hmm. now, too. And to <laughs> learn more about how to support these bald eagles and other birds of prey through Project Eagle, visit eagles.org. We'll be right back.